Hey there. By this point, it's not a secret that Windows 10 is dying. Microsoft is cutting mainline support coming up in October 2025, so that means if you want to keep using Windows, you're going to have to get real comfortable with Windows 11. But what if you just don't want to upgrade? Well, Linux might be worth a shot. Now, I'm not going to go on a whole tangent about Windows bad, Linux good, but I think having options is always a good thing. So if you've ever been curious about using Linux, I'll walk you through how to get Linux Mint running inside of a virtual machine, using VirtualBox, just to try it out. And just note that this guide should work for basically every Linux distro. I just wanted to show off Linux Mint. So why Linux Mint? Well, in the world of Linux, there's like a thousand different flavors and distributions. But for me, Mint's just one that I've daily driven on all kinds of hardware. And it's reliably just worked. The default Cinnamon desktop also has a familiar look and feel for Windows users. So I think it's a great option if you're tech savvy enough to try something new. But you mostly just want to use your computer. And why VM? Well, a lot of times when I see people recommending others try Linux, I'll see them say to dual boot as a way to try it out without removing Windows. But in my opinion, that's not the best option if you're just testing a distro out. Like, most people only have one drive in their computer, so when you start dual booting, you have to partition your drive and do some other things. And if you're new to this, you run an actual risk of deleting your files. But with a VM, you can run your main operating system and test Linux at the same time. If you don't like it, just delete the VM. No harm done. And there's basically zero chance of breaking your system during a setup. And if you're not familiar with VMs, at a stupid high level, they're basically just running a computer inside your computer. There are some downsides of VMs though, especially if you're a gamer or doing anything GPU intensive. So the software that runs VMs is called a hypervisor, and there are two main types, so type 1 and type 2. Type 2 hypervisors run inside of your main OS, like Windows, and they virtualize VMs, CPU, GPU, RAM, etc. But say you have an RTX 5090 in your system, and your VM is running in VirtualBox, your VM won't directly use that GPU because it doesn't have access to it, and your games are going to run like trash. On the other hand, Type 1 hypervisors, and setups using something like QEMU with GPU pass-through, those let you assign real hardware to the VM. That's a whole other can of worms. You also need to worry about stuff like whether your CPU has an integrated GPU, and the setup is just more technical. Either way, that's out of scope for this video. There are two things we need to do to prep the computer to run VMs. First, we need to install the Microsoft Visual C++ redistributable. Uh, you get this directly from Microsoft, and VirtualBox needs this to run on the back end. Next thing is a bit more convoluted. We need to enable virtualization on the CPU. It's just a setting in the BIOS. There's a few ways to get there, but a way I like to do it is to hold down the shift key while you're holding that down, restart the computer from the GUI. And don't release that shift key until the blue screen pops up. Once that loads, hit troubleshoot, advanced options, UEFI settings, then restart the computer once again. From here, you should see some options, which includes BIOS setup. It might be different for you, but mine is F10. Now, BIOS screens can look very different based on your motherboard manufacturer. So mine probably doesn't look like yours, but luckily the settings usually say pretty much the same thing. For me, I go to System Configuration, Section, then Enable Virtualization Technology. Then I hit F10 once again to save and exit, then log back into Windows. Now I'm back in Windows, and let's install VirtualBox. So just make sure you pull the installer from the official website, which is the one I'm at right now, and just run through the installation process. Once that is done, let's grab the Linux Mint image, or ISO, from their official website. And we will stick with the Cinnamon version, and just choose a mirror close to your country. Okay, with all that other stuff out of the way, let's make the VM. So, open VirtualBox. Click the New button. Give her VM a name. You can change the folder. Um, this is where the virtual bot or where the VM sits on your device. Uh, I'm just going to leave it default. But the ISO that needs to be the full path to the file you downloaded earlier for Linux Mint. I will skip the unintended installation. But for hardware, this is flexible. But just choose whatever is applicable to your device. I will leave the RAM the same, but I will give it a couple extra CPUs. 
And then for hard disk, this is basically your virtual hard drive. Uh, by default, mine shows 25. You can have it whatever. I'll just leave it at 25. And then we can just hit finish. And last of all, hit that start button. Once it loads, just hit install Linux Mint. And just go through the install process. Now, at this part here, don't worry about erasing the full disk. It might sound scary, but you're not actually erasing your full disk because, again, we're in a virtual machine, so it's all on that virtual hard disk. Once all that is done, we should see the screen right here, so just sign in. And as one of the final steps, I will just install the VirtualBox Guest Editions. To do that, just go down to Devices, then insert the CD image. One of the reasons you're doing this is so that you get better video support. And once the guest editions are installed, you should be able to adjust your resolution appropriately. Okay, that's all I had. Obviously, there's a lot more that you could do, but the whole point of this video was just to get you to a good minimum starting point. Hopefully, you learned something.